Aloha! Welcome everybody to Talk Story with John Waihe'e. We got a great guest this afternoon. We have with us the former Lieutenant Governor of the state of Hawaii, an, a good and old uh, a friend, and the uh, last Republican uh, <laughs> Lieutenant <laughs> Governor we, we've ever had. I mean, actually... Um, actually, this, I, think, I think I was the only uh, Republican. Well, no, here. Jimmy. Jimmy yeah, Kealoha. that was what we yeah, and and that was a transition between um, um, statehood, statehood right, and right, territory. Right. So we have with us James Duke Iona. Pleasure Duke, to be here, Gov. Duke is as uh, as to his friends, mm -hmm. and uh, and he was lieutenant governor with Governor Lingle. But don't forget, our relationship started. Oh, we uh, go long. Yeah, back. it goes back to law school. But you gave me my first big break. I'm very appreciative of that. Well, you know, I, I um, uh, wanted to make you a judge. <laughs> he did. He did. He did. And, I, <laughs> and like you I were said, a good judge. You know, you formed the, the, the juvenile court. Drug court. Yeah. Drug court, right. Right. Drug court. Right. Drug court. Right. Yeah. And tell us a little bit about that before we get into politics, because well, I you, think people ought to know that yeah, you, you, know, back, you have this background. Well, you know? back then, I guess it was, uh, was, it was very innovative in the sense that it was actually treating as opposed to just adjudicating drug addicts or people right. who were involved in the criminal justice system right. who had a who had a drug and or alcohol problem. And so it was very innovative in that respect. But what we also did in, in Hawaii's drug court program was we, we I guess you could say we, um, we shaped it for Hawaii. In other words, we right. didn't take a cookie, cookie cutter treatment program from the West and bring it here to Hawaii, like a 12-step or something like that. It was actually, you know, Darren Kawazoi was, uh, was a thrust behind of that, and he did a great job in regards to just making it more culturally appropriate and, and you know, uh, community-based. And it, it took well, off. I, it really I, I, you know, and it was a big success. It and was. I want you to know that I have taken credit for that <laughs> success. Hey, we all have. We <laughs> all have. We all have. And I, so. I made you the, ju uh, you know, uh, nominated you to the judgeship that allowed that to happen. <laughs> Meanwhile, you went on and became lieutenant governor. Mm -hmm. You were the highest, I guess, ranking official currently living in Hawaii You're uh, right. in the uh, you know Republican Party, and we now have a Republican uh, president elect with uh, Mr. Donald Trump. Very interesting. And and you know I I wanted to talk to you about that. I I, I was hoping. Uh, well, I don't even know where to begin. But why don't you <laughs> tell us? Well, I mean, he has so many facets. He know? does, he does. And he's, uh, tell us a little bit about well, where you see all of this well, going. Well, you know, okay, well, first of all, and this is not like a disclaimer or anything like that, but, you know, the primary for right. the nominee for the Republican Party, you had 17 candidates. Yeah. 17, right? And, and a lot of really uh, I thought. people I know that... Uh, and I consider, you know, high-quality type people. I agree. I, I think a lot of us thought that way. Donald Trump was the last person I thought would be standing. Okay? <laughs> really, I, I never yeah. thought he'd be the last person standing, but he was. And I had committed from day one that I was going to support the Republican Party nominee, and I stuck to that. Um, of course, uh, he said well, a lot of things. Can I ask you something, though, yeah. since, you, since you put it that way? And I don't want to put you on the spot, but did you have a particular favorite in the, in the, during the period of the I, primary? I came out at the very end. Um, you know, I was, uh, it, it was, it was a, gr a great field, like you said. And in, initially, it just kind of let it, I let it kind of filter down. And then when it came down to, I believe it was four or five, uh, I supported Marco Rubio. I, oh. I, felt, I felt that Marco Rubio, well, young, 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 young and I thought dynamic. he, I thought he had it all. You know, I, I really, I mean, there were some things obviously that Republicans didn't agree with him, but every single one of those candidates, uh, you had Republicans. Well, one of the issues that people didn't agree with him was that uh, immigration. immigration. Yeah. Which, by the way, we we may see, I think, in Hawaii, we may see Im immigration a little less, little differently than somebody that might be living on the true. Texas border. True. You know? True. True. But I thought I thought Rubio was the best, and then like I said, you know, when when it came when Trump was the last person standing, I, obviously I, I you know I said I would support the Republican. He was a Republican nomination, uh, nom nominee I should say, and I you know I, I supported him. He said a lot of things that obviously you know kind of curls your toes. Uh, you go, oh my goodness. Um, but now he is president elect. Now he's president elect, and and I think what you're going to see, and you and I have been talking about right. this, and I think it's so true. I think everybody sees it. I think his eyes have, have, have opened up. Right. I think right. he's seeing it in a different perspective now. Not that he didn't see it when he was running for, you know, when he was campaigning. But you, you got to admit, though, when he was running, 
uh, he, it was a new activity for well, him. Well, you know, like, likewise with you, right? right? I mean, you were a lieutenant governor, likewise right. with me. But, but when you stepped into that office as governor... It makes... It's right? different. Yeah, exactly. There is a difference. I don't think anybody can appreciate... Uh, what it's like to be in that position until you actually you're actually, you're actually in it. there right and, and likewise I think he's starting to appreciate and likewise it. I think that's why you see a lot of presidents are governors right because they it's, have yeah it's closer exactly it's closer to what but you it's need. still not the same right <laughs> absolutely still not the same absolutely the the burden that uh, see I um, when I started my politics in the in the, on the Democratic side uh, you know Governor Burns was uh, in the sense the enemy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I was mm -hmm. I was the young Turks. So we we right. were trying to you know like this throw, overthrow the establishment. When I became governor, I started, wow, this guy was a great man, because I began to understand why he did what he did right. or appreciate right. the the, the uh, whether you current. agreed or didn't agree. You you now get a better appreciation of different perspectives. So what do you? What do you hope then? Let, let's talk about what do you hope that he will do, well, and, and what the, and what that might mean for our. Well, obviously, uh, I hope country. he can be. I hope he can be a leader first and foremost, right. and, and a leader is somebody that you know leads by influence, right? I mean, you measure it by influence, and and I, I hope it's positive influence, not not just leadership because I'm the president of the United. And I don't think we're going to see that. I really don't. I, I I believe that that Trump can can bring people together. Uh, if they give him a chance, obviously. I mean, well, if you don't got, give him, No, yeah. you, you've got to admit, though, that <coughs> because of the roughness of the party oh, I, I agree. And the election, that's not going to be an easy test. No, it's not. It's no. not. It's not. And it, it, whether it was Hillary or whether it was, uh, oh, it was Donald. It was going to be the same. It was going to yeah. be very tough role. But I, I believe, you know, you'll see him now, uh, like, I, like we were just talking about, have a, a broader perspective on things. And when you see the tempering of his position. You've seen it right now also. Right. Uh, you know, you're seeing some are, of it right actually, now. Yeah. And, and you see who he's talking to. You know, he's talking to a, a spectrum of, of people. Well, you know, you're, you're going to have appointees that obviously are going to be controversial. Well, that's like any administration, right? Right. So the, the proof is going to be in the pudding in regards well, to Well, one of his er early uh, appointments, uh, which is, uh, is Nikki Haley from... Uh, from uh, South Carolina. North South, Carolina. North, North Carolina, Carolina. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I've always been uh, interested in her background and uh, her viewpoint. And you, she was one of the most antagonistic Republicans <laughs> to his uh, ascension. Yeah. But here she is now. She appears that she's going to be oh, the look, he's ambassador. Con he's to, considering uh, Mitt Romney as his secretary of state. Mitt Romney, who, who emphatically said, no way. I mean, you heard what he said about Donald right. Trump. He called them... He called them some nasty names also. Oh, I should say nasty names, but he put him in a very well, bad light. I think light. Mitt Romney would probably be a very good Secretary of State, frankly. Well, and, and uh, you know, if, uh, <laughs> it's funny, but when I was practicing, uh, uh, when I was a partner in the Washington, D.C. law firm, um, it seemed like we all gathered together. My, my, my partners were um, Bob Dole, mm. who's, mm. Uh, you know, who I admired and was a great American. And um, uh, and also uh, George Mitchell, and Ann Richards. You know? oh, so we yeah, talk about yeah, the Republicans yeah. and the Democrats. Right, right. But sometimes, okay, the reason why I'm bringing that up is, you know, we had we were all sort of a cozy club, and sometimes that relation, the ability to get along gives the impression to the rest of America that there is an establishment, and the establishment doesn't matter whether you're Democrat or Republican, you're not us. You know, you know, I, and, you and know yeah, I think we How see, does that work? I, I, you know, I don't, I don't know how that ever, how it got to the point where it's at right now. You got to admit, it, yeah. it is so entrenched right now, right? I mean, Washington has the worst, uh, uh, I guess you could say, reputation uh, that it's ever had with the people of America. And I guess it's something that has evolved because of people being entrenched in what they well, want to you know, we used to we used to we used to practice law and says, you know, if we can't win in court, we'll just go change the law. <laughs> yeah. and, I mean, we exactly. had Republicans oh, and Democrats. Oh, but, it, but exactly, there there is a process to everything, right? So Donald represents an attack against the establishment. He does. Now, as he moderates his viewpoints, 
how much of that image does he lose? Good question. And I think we were talking about this offline, and we said, you know, that first big, for me at least, I thought one of his first big political decisions was going to be whether or not he was going to follow through on Hillary and, the, and, and indicting her or, right, or right, opening exactly. up the investigation again. Exactly. I, I felt that it, was, uh, it would be a good political move for him to just say, All right, it's, it's over, or to say, okay, this is up to the DOJ. I, my attorney general is, is, you know, is the person that, is, that has to make that call. I appoint the attorney general. I have full faith in that attorney general, and they'll do whatever they need to do. I thought he would do that, but apparently I guess he's signaling that there's not going to be any, anything further on this matter. Well, that's, that's his signal, but I don't, I don't know if well, he's that's, given that. Well, that's his signal. And, 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 you know, if you were hosting this and I was the guest, you would be asking me something like, um, would the Democrats allow him to actually moderate his position? And that's, that's, a, that's gonna, a good question. You know, that's going to be no. what the... Uh, and, and that's why I hope it, it, you know, this is a chance for both parties to, I guess, to, uh, uh, to bring some credibility back to Congress, right? And, and, right. and, and, and show that they can work well, together. Well, the people obviously didn't right. like the establishment. I mean, you didn't have to if go you didn't to Donald get it, Trump, yeah. but I mean, Bernie Sanders. Exactly. You know, Bernie exactly. Sanders. And, and even the third party candidates, I think, got more collectively than they've ever had in the past. I could be wrong on that, but I think well, they did. Well, um, you're probably right on that. You know, but, but and, and it shows, again, it shows the disenchantment that the voters have in regards to, like you just said. So what does this all mean for Hawaii? Well, I don't. Uh, well, first okay, of all, I, what does I, I, the alienation mean for Hawaii? Number one, and, and just as importantly, what does Donald Trump well, mean? Well, obviously, I, I think it's being blown out. I, I really believe that that you know all of this. You know, initially, you saw so many uh, different. Uh, I guess you could say stories in regards to, okay, this is what it's going to mean for immigration, this is what it's going to mean for race relations, this is what it's going to mean for the Native Hawaiians, etc. I think that's all blown up, really, yeah. I, I really do. You, okay. you can't say that, you know, based on what he's, you know, he may have said uh, in the campaign at different points, right. that, you know, he's going to follow through on, on all of that or he's going to create some kind of racial, you know, just some kind of racial tension that, that can't be overcome Well, Well, you know, th that was the fear. That that's was the fear, fear right, and that's fear. why you had these crazy people going to an hotel saying, Sig Trump, you know. And Likewise, and Hillary, he, right? You know, well, yeah, but, you know, what was interesting was that Trump, he stood up and said, I don't want any of that stuff. So, you know, there's some, uh, maybe some ba balance. The, but the system, is the American system strong enough to withhold uh, you know, withstand anybody. I mean, I don't think somebody, you know, are you saying that somebody just can't come in and change the whole thing? No. After all, we survived warring, Warren Hiding, right? I mean, <laughs> if you can do that, surely you can. Well, this is, the, the I guess, the beauty uh, and, and the genius of uh, the Founding Fathers and the Constitution right. and the way government's been set up. I hope, hopefully now, we will truly see uh, three branches of government acting the way, or I should say, performing the way it's been set up to, and let the process, you know, work itself. Right. And so, but, let, and when we come back, I've got to take a break right now, but when we come back, uh, let's talk about what this all means, specifically for Hawaii. Um, we're going to take a short break. We've got an exciting program. Duke Iona, former Lieutenant Governor, State of Hawaii, will be right back. single Wednesday. And the progenitors of this show, uh, Sharon Moriwaki and Ray Starling to my left. So how's it going? How's it going, Sharon? Do you like the show? I love the show. Yeah. And I hope everybody watches the show and joins in and gives us their comments on clean energy. Yeah. Every week. Every week. With incredible yeah. guests and topics and discussion and mostly candor. This, we like this candor. month is all renewable energy. And next month we're going to look at procurement. Each month we have a different series. Yeah. Uh, and so it's, it's going very well. We learn well. so much. We keep the oh, public so, so well advised the best we can. Ray, what do you think? Well, I think this is the place where it's happening. This is where we discuss the latest of what what is going on in the energy world. And it's a great place to be, a great place to meet some new people that are into the energy world that uh, we, uh, we haven't talked to before. So I'm happy to be here. Okay, this is a, you know, energy is the biggest thing happening in Hawaii, whether you realize it or not, it's gonna affect all of our lives, is affecting all of our lives. And it's like 
A million things are happening in energy. How could you possibly understand what's happening unless you are informed? This is your way. This is the deal. Hawaii, the state of clean energy, every Wednesday, 4 o'clock, right? Join us. Yeah, I knew you'd say that. <laughs> Welcome back to Talk Story with John Wahe'e. We have as our guest the former Lieutenant Governor of the state of Hawaii, Dukai Ona. And we are having an exciting time talking about politics nationally, but we're going to switch off and talk about Hawaii. By the way, folks, if you want to call in, the number is 415-871-2474. 415-871-2474. So we're back here in Hawaii. Let's look at the, you know, do you believe that the, uh, the election of Donald Trump will somehow strengthen the Republican presence in Hawaii? No. You don't think so? No. What would do it? What would make it possible for us to have, you know, you and I agree about one thing, I, I am sure. Uh, 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 well, we agree on more than one thing, but at, at least we agree with this. I really believe that this state needs a strong second party. Absolutely. There needs to be a two-party right. system. Right. I mean, if for nothing else, the quality of legislation that will come out of uh, Democrats being challenged. Right. You know, and the reason I better. say, the reason I say no, it will not affect the, uh, the, the resurgence or strength of the Republican Party is not because of Donald Trump and, and, you know, who he is, but it's because of what I believe in, and this is just my opinion, on my humble opinion. I, I firmly believe that what's the problem with the Republican Party in the state of Hawaii is we're not getting out the vote. I, I really, really believe that. Yeah. I really believe that. I, well, I, one thing about Donald, Donald got out the vote. He did, but you know, in Hawaii, he can say he, he, you can say maybe he did, but I can tell you right now, when we had our first caucus, remember we changed our rules in regards to caucuses, right. to primaries here right, in Hawaii. Right. I when when, when Mitt Romney was the, was the nominee, we had a tremendous turnout, if not more. I, thought, I think it was more than what we had this time around. Or if not, it was about the same. So what, 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 is, what is your party doing about That's the just voter it. turnout? Get out the vote. Okay, a good example. With Mitt Romney, it, it was a lot of the LDS members that came out and voted in the primary. Okay. Did okay. that translate to the, to the general? And if it did... In what numbers and how? In other words, did they just come out and vote for Romney, or did it trickle down to the to the local races? But the but LDS people aren't automatically Republican, right? Well, you know, yeah, I guess you could say but more so are, than they, some other they, they faith-based have, communities. The reason why I say that is because because of Utah and because they voted for me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, you know, so I do have some affection on uh -huh. this issue, but. But no, but it seems like with, with, uh, with Donald Trump, he had a problem with Utah. But there, is, there are people in Hawaii who have strong views uh, on the social issues that need to be, that aren't necessarily Republican. They, they're scattered throughout the Democrats. How do you pull all of them into, into standing with uh, the creation of an opposition. Well, of course, uh, another factor, and that's why I don't want to. I don't want to rank them and say, "Well, this is the, this is the real priority. This is this is the, the number one reason why Republicans don't fare well in Hawaii." Because I believe it's all of the above, and I really believe getting out the vote is is very significant. I think you know, in regards to that question, in regards to how do we get the you know people to vote that way, it, it is about image also. Right. And you won't know that. It's it's right. about the image of the Republican Party, and. Right. They keep throwing it back, the old, you know, which is really that old image of the Republican Party. Oh, you, white, mean the first rich. 50 years. Right, exactly. Yeah. I mean, look, I'm not white, I'm not, <laughs> I'm not, and I'm not, I'm not rich, okay? And I'm not, I don't come from that aristocrat background. And, and neither was Lynn Finnegan, neither That's was right. Elwin Ahu, neither is, uh, you know, um, Andrea Tupola. Right. <laughs> I mean, well, we, actually, you we, have some great, uh, great people. We got a call. Do we have a call? We got a call. Yes, Governor Why? Hey, I, I have a question for uh, former Governor, okay. Lieutenant Governor Duke okay. Iona. Okay. Um, there's a certain amount of dissension in the Republican Party. What, 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 how does that play in Hawaii? Okay. How does that play? Well, the question, how does it play the, now? The question how play that the, the, the viewer is asking is um, that there is a lot of d dissension. Mm -hmm. within the Republican Party sure. of Hawaii. Sure. And how does that play? Does that help, hurt? How, well, how does this all work? If you look at the, the image, obviously, it, it, plays, it, plays a, you know, it, it plays the role that it, that it does play, right? 
but no more, I would say, no more dissension than what you see in the Democrat Party. Yeah, that, <laughs> well, we, we seem to we be might able be a little to more vocal, though, but get, get past it. Yeah. And, and, and uh, you know, um, but... Uh, well, I, you know, I, I, have to, I have to maybe take a little bit exception to that in regards oh, please, to what please. happened this past this election. I mean, really, right, really, right. do you really believe that the Bernie, the Bernie supporters, I mean, you, you were right. there. Right, right, no, I was. You were there on, on the floor. You, you know, it's, it's amazing because you may be pointing out something. In, in Hawaii, it appeared that at, at least at the end, uh, most of the Bernie people came out. And I know that the incident in uh, the Democratic Party, in the convention, where, yeah. where they, with the yeah. woman yeah. flipped yeah. the right. finger right. at, the, right. you know, it's a, the people who disciplined her were the, were the Bernie people. So the, <coughs> the, the young people, now, that didn't necessarily translate across the country. Exactly. But it, it, so I am actually, a, someday you should invite me to your radio show and we'll talk about sure. what my hope is sure. for these young Bernie types that, that are coming in. But one of the things is the Republican Party has always uh, prided itself on prior, uh, you know, try to like be selective. We're going to help this person. We're going to help that person. Uh, did any of that uh, targeting process affect uh, the, the, how, the, how well the party has done? Well, you think that there needs to be a much general... Well, in regards to that question, in regards to the, I guess you say, the dissension within the party, uh, he's correct in regard, or she is correct, the, the caller was correct, in regards to the fact that there is a dissenting voice in the Republican Party right now. Um, and I'll leave it at that. Okay. And because we have to deal with that, right? right? Obviously, you have to deal with that within the party. So I don't want to bring it out and start talking about, you know, who that party is, what they no, stand no, for, no, etc. No, no. But but the bottom line is, yes, you're right. And and obviously, you welcome a dissenting view. You should oh, welcome, I right? Do. Yeah. I do. I mean, I, I that's do. the only, and that's why you and I agree on, on, a, on a party do. system. I do. I do. I do. Right? Because uh, if you don't have dissension, then you don't have quality. Exactly. So and the exactly. real question is, well, I, how do you, exactly how do you get over that? Right. How do you and get over it? How do you not, pull it together? We have not done a good job. Of what that. about you and I uh, have discussed in the past the, the importance of message. Mm -hmm. Yes. You know, a, a consistent message. Now, if you Absolutely. were going to just give us a brief summary of a message that you feel that the Republican Party represents, not, 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 I'm not talking about internally, but represents right. the people of right. Hawaii, what would be the essential ingredients? I think of I brought out some of that earlier when I noted the people who are in the party, who are the leaders in the party, myself and, and you know, Elwin Ahu when he ran, uh, Lynn Finnegan as a representative, uh, Andrea Tupola now. By the way, all you know, top people. Oh, good all pe people. real good people. I, I can say, I say we represent the people of Hawaii okay. right, at, at all levels, right. at, at all levels. And, and if anything, if you want to talk about a big tent, we welcome everybody, even the dissenting, right. even those, even on the social issues. Right. I mean, it's it's there for discussion, and it always been. So I mean, same thing with the Democrat Party. They keep saying that they're the big tent, but how would I be welcomed in the Democrat well, well, Party with, with my social there, views? There, there, there is something. Uh, well, you know, uh, you, you would be welcome. <laughs> you we take welcome. everybody in, oh. but 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 no. But I, I'm saying that. One of the essential things about the Republican philosophy is this idea of smaller government, more private uh, initiative, and how does that work in Hawaii? Well, I mean, obviously, it should. It, this is why people's ears should be percolating when they hear that, because we we have they had Democrat majority, a, a super majority by the Democrats in the last forty years. Oh right? yeah, we are the number one state in the union in regards to taxes. We're the number one state in the union when it comes to. But cost how of how would you change it? Well, that's what I mean. That's part of the that's part of the narrative that has to come out. And how do you change it? I don't think it's necessarily this this tag that you say smaller government, limited taxes. I think really, and, and you're going to say, well, this is cliche, but fiscal responsibility. I think the mayor's race was a good example of that. It, it was Caldwell who brought out this this partisan part of that race, right? He okay. brought out the Democrat yeah. Republican right, thing, right, right. okay. But really, what Charles was running on, which I think was the issue, was fiscal responsibility on the rail. That was it. Can you be more fiscally that's responsible? A, that's a powerful message. It is a powerful message, and people relate to it. Why aren't they I don't, hearing? Why it? did it not translate? Right? I, I, yeah. don't, I don't know why. Because you know, the bottom line question for that race was simple. 
okay, tell me, what is the current mayor going to do any differently in his next four years? What is he going to do any differently? When he ran four years ago, he said, on budget, on time, I will do rail better. That's a quote. He said you know, that. Uh, one, one, one aspect of the, the message, potential message for, for Republicans that, that I find attractive is the, um, is the focus on, on family and, and dignity. The, the, the Democratic Party started years ago with the idea of the dignity of the of the person and the family and all of that, and yet we never really we don't talk about it. And, and thank I you think for that. You, you're thank you missing an opportunity no, no, thank you by for not that. doing that. No, you're absolutely Republic. right. We we have I have talked about that. I mean, for me, that has been one of the tenets of, or I should say, the pillars of of my platform in regards to not only as LG, but when I ran twice for governor, it was about the family. And I, I go back to my experience, thanks to you, as a circuit court judge uh, working with, with uh, in, in drug court. And when I looked at it, uh, Governor, what I saw was, you know, really a route to a lot of the issues we have socially, right? The homeless issue, addiction, et cetera. It boils down to the family. Well, right? I think that's a powerful message, too. It now, does boil down to now, the family. You know, one of the things, I, I had uh, Beth Fukumoto on the mm -hmm. show, and, and we talked about the fact that I think, okay, that when I see the, the party, there's this tendency to for the local Republican Party to look to follow national, national trends right. and not focus on, uh, and yet there on are history. within our own contemporary history a number of Republican heroes in my mind. Hiram Fall. Yes, Pat Psyche. I, I, uh, Pat Psyche. But I worked with Again, them. they're not white. <laughs> no, 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 no. Fantastic. But they were, I worked First with Chinese, Pat right? yeah. She was fantastic. Yeah. Hiram Fong is the father of Asian immigration for the You're whole right. nation. You're right. These are exciting people. You're right. You know. And I think you, 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 you again, you touch. You should be. You should come into the party and, and give your ideas <laughs> because you, you are touching on some themes that we obviously uh, are not promoting that we should promote so that we can. But you know, when I hear this thing about the Republican Party is not putting up good candidates. Oh no, I gotta disagree with that. I will agree. I gotta disagree with that. We have some great candidates out there. It's just that. For one, when you got that R behind your name, you are two strikes behind right away. Right off the bat, you're two strikes behind. Well, you're putting so, up so good candidates, and I really uh, want to encourage you. And, 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 and by the way, I am a loyal Democrat. Oh, well, we so, know that. So yeah, the only yeah. way that we can have a two-part is to have a, a strong opposition. But you and I both agree that the, no. the, the health of our, of our state be, you know, it will res reside in, in the discussions that we have. And that's right. And so, ladies and gentlemen, I know we have come to the end of our program. This has been exciting. Thank you so much for joining us. Duke Iona, former lieutenant governor. Governor, thank you so much. I appreciate it.